Sure. Right. Pro tip, if you're ever going to do a talk, make sure you know how to pronounce the talk you're talking about. Sadly, no idea. <laughs> I reckon the Sphinx. 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 Thank you, I'm glad we had a crowdsource for that. Right. I'm Andy Gale, I'm on Twitter, I like Bristol Rovers, I do all the things it says here. I work for this company who are on Twitter. We do DevOps consultancy, Chef Cloud Automation, and you can read and web application stuff, hence PHP Southwest. I've got too many slides, I've got five minutes. We're banging for them. <laughs> right, so migrations. What does Finks do? It does migrations. What do I mean by that? I mean changing my database. So you might do an SQL patch, why shouldn't you do that? Well, you might want to store your SQL patches in um, your version control system. Well, you can do that and do an SQL patch. We'll just use that. Okay, I'll go away. No, um, but maybe you want to do it in a kind of platform agnostic way. Maybe you want to use different database engines and so on. So once you've done that, you can then find your migrations, obviously, when you're doing continuous delivery, continuous integration and continuous deployment the big three C and other letters. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, yeah, so the good thing about this word I can't pronounce is that I think it's called Sphinx or Finx or something like that. Um, it's framework independent. You can just use it. It installs with Composer. It's easy to use. It's difficult to spell. It's also difficult to pronounce. Just call it Ant. We're getting there though. <laughs> Thinks. Right. It's Paul, I've covered this, so you, you do one migration with PHP code and you get MySQL, Postgres, SQL, SQL Server. And what it's really good with, I do a lot of taking over other people's shonky work and having to make it work. And when we, we like to get the sites in, do continuous delivery on them, and Thinks is very useful for doing that. We also use it for new projects, but most your user framework probably has a migration tool. I'm just going to bring this with me over here. It'll be much more convenient. Right. So um, you've all used Composer before, hopefully. If you haven't, then don't ask me. Ask this man here. Um, but finally, you create a migrations directory and you type in it, and it creates you a config file, which is called ThinkSaml. Thank you for that document, Reap, because that would be really annoying. Have you got a problem with YAML files, yes. sir? What's your problem with YAML files? It's YAML. YAML is very <laughs> annoying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't write your tour. The guy who did a lot of work on this tour, he, he, got, he got to choose the configuration tools well, and, and file Twitter. format, so we called it YAML. That's it. We could rewrite it, give him a pull request, I suppose. Maybe we should do that. Anyway, so to, to make yourself a migration, you go, thinks. Great. <laughs> My new great migration. If you don't put this in camel case, it completely kicks off of you and goes, it's got to be in camel case. Which pisses me off. Apologies. <laughs> so, um, it gives you a file that looks a bit like this. You get an up function, you get a down function. Who needs that explaining? <laughs> when you migrate, up. When you roll back, down. I explained it anyway. I'm nice like that. So, Instead of just having an SQL file with a create table thing in, you can use this syntax here, which is portable, portable across all database systems that we mentioned earlier. You, you all know what these do, hopefully. If you don't, come and talk to me in the pub later, but I will charge you a pint. <laughs> so, when you go down, you can delete that table we just had. So we created a user's table. Now we're dropping the user's table. You might want to consider if that's a good idea when you're rolling back, is all I'm saying. You add loads of users, and you go, actually, I'm done with this now. I'm just going to delete all that data. Maybe you might want it again later. Think about it. So, this change thing is quite a funky feature of things. Because what it does is it does the up and down for you. So you add the table, and it reverses these. So when you go up, it runs this. And when you... Roll well, back, it does the opposite of this. Again, maybe you may or may not want to do that. Think about it, that's all I'm saying. You can rename a column, you can rename a table, you can alter a limit, 
You can copy and paste things from the docs and put them on your slides because it's midnight. <laughs> <laughs> you can run some SQL, which is quite important. Um, and you can migrate with the migrate command, roll back with the roll back command, and get a status of what happens with the status command. Quite straightforward commands. What it does, thinks, is it stores the migrations that's run in the database. So when you're doing deployment over multiple nodes, you can run, migrate, and if it's already happened, it won't happen again. And you can roll back once, and it won't roll back again. But obviously, it'll keep rolling back, so you need to look at the docs and specify where you want to roll back, so if you want to roll back. This is only kind of applicable if you're being a bit simple about it. So, there's also a little web app that you can use. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but there we go. Um, thinks, existing projects, I like using it with continuous delivery. It's simple to use, hence I like it. I made this thing, and that's it. Goodbye. <laughs>